Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation. We could call it a rational equation, but soon we're going to turn it into a polynomial equation. So notice that we have x plus 2 times x plus 3 on the left-hand side, and we have a rational expression, 360, divided by x squared plus x on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x squared plus x first. That way, we have all the x's on one side and the 360, the constant, on the right-hand side. Now next, we're going to go ahead and factor x squared plus x because it's factorable, right? There's a common factor. Let's do it. Now at this point, we can go different routes. Obviously, uh, we can go ahead and try to factor uh, 360 and look for factors. But uh, we don't have any guarantee that the solutions will be integers, right? So that's just going to be an assumption. Anyways, I'll be presenting two approaches. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. One thing that I want you to note after cross multiplying and factoring out the x, we get something nice. So this is a special type of equation. Notice that x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x and x plus 1 times x plus 2 is x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now where did I get those from? I multiplied these two and these two. And why did I do that? Because when I did, I got the same x term, which is a good thing because now we can use substitution, right? So we can go ahead and call this y, and then this becomes y plus 2. And that greatly simplifies the equation because, take a look, this is a quartic equation, right? If you go ahead and distribute, you're going to get an interesting equation like this one. Let me write the whole thing. x to the fourth plus 6x cubed plus 11x squared plus 6x minus 360 equals 0, right? And would you like to solve this quartic equation? Maybe use the quartic formula? Okay, let's take a look. This is just showing you part of the quartic formula. By the way, you can tell by looking at the progress bar, hopefully at the bottom, this is not even the whole picture. So you're basically looking at probably less than one third of the formula. I'm going to try to include the link. If I forget, remind me. Uh, so you can look at the whole thing. But the quartic formula is gigantic. It's uh, huge. Okay, too complicated. I, I don't think anybody uses it. But anyways, it exists at least. Unfortunately, no quantic formula. But if, if quantic formula existed, think about it. It would be super duper complicated. Like you would probably need a book to write it. Anyways, you don't want to go the quartic route, hopefully. If you do, be my guest, uh, use the link, you know, and solve it. And you can verify that way. But it's not recommended. Anyways, let's get back to this. So I have this product uh, where I was able to simplify this. So let's go ahead and multiply first. So where do I start? I have this. And then I turn it into x squared plus 3x multiplied by x squared plus 3x plus 2. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and use substitution. And this is equal to 360. We'll take care of that constant later on. Don't worry about it right now. But here we said that, okay, if you call this y, this will be y plus 2. So now we have y times y plus 2 equals 360. This is nice. And again, uh, for, this, uh, for the solution of this equation, which is quadratic, there are two ways to go about it. So we can, I guess we could call this 1a and 1b. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and take a look. So... First method is going to be distributing. And then we're going to add one to both sides. And you'll see in a little bit why we're doing it. Now we have, we did what is called completing the square. So we have on the left hand side y plus 1 quantity squared. And that's equal to 361. And notice that 
361 is 19 squared, which is nice. So we can write this as plus minus 19. And from here, by setting the y values equal to 19 and negative 19, we get y equals 18 or y equals negative 20. Okay, so we get two values. And then let's continue with the other approach, like 1b. So this gave us the solutions, but those are y values. I'm going to back substitute and find the x values. Let's go ahead and look at the other approach. What could the other approach be? Now, once you get this, y times y plus 2 is 360, you could write 360 in different ways, such as, can you, can you write 360 as a product of two integers that are two apart, either two even consecutive integers or two odd consecutive integers? And it's possible. How about 18 times 20? That works. That's not the only solution, but it gives you a solution. So from here, we get y equals 18. Or you can go with y times y plus 2. Since something can be written as 18 times 20, that also indicates that it can be written as negative 20 times negative 18. By negating both sides, but switching them around, because this time, negative 20 becomes the smaller number. And that is going to be our y value. And notice that we're getting the exact same solutions from here. Those are the y values. This is the quartic formula. I mean, a piece from the quartic formula. If you want to see the whole thing, check the link down below or somewhere else. Okay, let's go ahead and continue from where we left off. Now, we do have the following, y equals 18 or y equals negative 20. What is y? Let's remember x squared plus 3x. Okay, great. So x squared plus 3x equals 18. That's nice because this equation is factorable. How do I know that? I do know that because I've probably seen this before. And also notice that uh, 18 can be factored into 6 and 3 and their difference can be made 3. Anyway, so this is like uh, finding two numbers whose product is negative 18 and whose sum is 3. Those numbers are 6 and 3. So we can go ahead and write this as x plus 6 times x minus 3 equals 0. From here, we get x equals negative 6 and x equals 3. So those are going to be the solutions, but they're not the only solutions, maybe, right? How about the other ones? Okay, they're going to come from here. And let's go ahead and set the y value now equal to negative 20. But unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately, who knows, depending on how you look at it. You're going to get non-real complex solutions. This is not factorable easily, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 20, which is 80. 9 minus 80 is negative 71. That gives us the square root of 71 times i, the imaginary unit. Okay, there's a product there. Sometimes it's not written, but it's understood. So we got four solutions. It's a quartic, makes sense, right? There should be a maximum of four solutions because sometimes roots can repeat, right? Okay, cool. So that's kind of one way to look at it. And let me go ahead and show you the second method and we'll just go from there. Okay. The second method, so we did 1a and 1b. For our second method, we're going to do the following. Obviously, we're going to start off with what's given. Now, instead of Instead of going all, uh, through all these loops, obviously, if possible, you can do the following. It's not always possible. Even though the second method is not possible, the first method is possible for some problems where you get uh, anything like this. So let's say it this was equal to 350. You could still use the first method, but the second method would not be available because it kind of assumes or at least looks for integer solutions. So here's what I'm going to do. Can I write 360 as a product of four consecutive integers? And the answer is yes. Think about it. 2 times 360 is 720, right? Now let's observe the following. And 720 is 6 factorial. Now why did I say that? 6 factorial is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So if you totally just ignore the 2 and the 1 because... Uh, this is going to be 360. There you go. You got the product, right? So I kind of used it as a base, but uh, you could also try different numbers like would 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 work? And then so on and so forth. Obviously, this is going to be too small. If you try something like 7, 8, 9, 10, that's going to be too large. Okay, you can get it. Anyways, let's get back to this. So 360 can be written as 
five, six times five times four times three, which means uh, this can be three. Oopsies. This can be a three. This can be a four, five, and six. Obviously, it's all going to work. So that means x equals three. How do you find the other solution? Well, the other solution is just going to be reversing everything, like kind of negating everything. So instead of uh, take this six larger number and use it as a negative, and then negative six, multiply by negative five, multiply by negative four, multiply by negative three is also going to be 360. Therefore, x equals negative six is going to be another solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.